The deep sea or deep layer is the lowest layer in the ocean, existing below the thermocline and above the seabed, at a depth of 1,000 fathoms 1, meters or more. Little or no light penetrates this part of the ocean, and most of the organisms that live there rely for subsistence on falling organic matter produced in the photic zone. For this reason, scientists once assumed that life would be sparse in the deep ocean, but virtually every probe has revealed that, on the contrary, life is abundant in the deep ocean. From the time of Pliny until the late 19th century, humans believed there was no life in the deep. It took a historic expedition in the ship Challenger between 1872 and 1876 to prove Pliny wrong, its deep-sea dredges and trawls brought up living things from all depths that could be reached. Yet even in the 20th century scientists continued to imagine that life at great depth was insubstantial, or somehow inconsequential. The eternal dark, the almost inconceivable pressure, and the extreme cold that exist below 1,000 meters were, they thought, so forbidding as to have all but extinguished life. The reverse is in fact true. Below 200 meters lies the largest habitat on Earth. In 1960, the Bathyscaphe Trieste descended to the bottom of the Mariana Trench near Guam, at 10,911 meters 35,797 feet, 6.780 miles, the deepest known spot in any ocean. If Mount Everest 8 meters were submerged there, its peak would be more than a mile beneath the surface. The Trieste was retired, and for a while the Japanese remote-operated vehicle ROV, Kaiko was the only vessel capable of reaching this depth. It was lost at sea in 2003. In May and June 2009, the hybrid ROV, HROV Nerus returned to the Challenger Deep for a series of three dives to depths exceeding 10,900 meters. It has been suggested that more is known about the moon than the deepest parts of the ocean. Little was known about the extent of life on the deep ocean floor until the discovery of thriving colonies of shrimps and other organisms around hydrothermal vents in the late 1970s. Before the discovery of the undersea vents, it had been accepted that almost all life on Earth obtained its energy, one way or another, from the sun. The new discoveries revealed groups of creatures that obtained nutrients and energy directly from thermal sources and chemical reactions associated with changes to mineral deposits. These organisms thrive in completely lightless and anaerobic environments in highly saline water that may reach 300 degrees Fahrenheit 150 degrees Celsius, drawing their sustenance from hydrogen sulfide, which is highly toxic to almost all terrestrial life. The revolutionary discovery that life can exist under these extreme conditions changed opinions about the chances of there being life elsewhere in the universe. Scientists now speculate that Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, may be able to support life beneath its icy surface, where there is evidence of a global ocean of liquid water. Topic: Environmental characteristics. Topic. Light Natural light does not penetrate the deep ocean, with the exception of the upper parts of the mesopelagic. Since photosynthesis is not possible, plants cannot live in this zone. Since plants are the primary producers of almost all of Earth's ecosystems, life in this area of the ocean must depend on energy sources from elsewhere. Except for the areas close to the hydrothermal vents, this energy comes from organic material drifting down from the photic zone. The sinking organic material is composed of algal particulates, detritus, and other forms of biological waste, which is collectively referred to as marine snow. Topic. Pressure Because pressure in the ocean increases by about 1 atmosphere for every 10 meters of depth, the amount of pressure experienced by many marine organisms is extreme. 
Until recent years, the scientific community lacked detailed information about the effects of pressure on most deep sea organisms because the specimens encountered arrived at the surface dead or dying and weren't observable at the pressures at which they lived. With the advent of traps that incorporate a special pressure maintaining chamber, undamaged larger metazoan animals have been retrieved from the deep sea in good condition. Topic: Salinity. Salinity is remarkably constant throughout the deep sea at about 35 parts per thousand. There are some minor differences in salinity, but none that are ecologically significant, except in the Mediterranean and Red Seas. Topic. Temperature The two areas of greatest and most rapid temperature change in the oceans are the transition zone between the surface waters and the deep waters, the thermocline, and the transition between the deep sea floor and the hot water flows at the hydrothermal vents. Thermoclines vary in thickness from a few hundred meters to nearly a thousand meters. Below the thermocline, the water mass of the deep ocean is cold and far more homogeneous. Thermoclines are strongest in the tropics, where the temperature of the epipelagic zone is usually above 20 degrees Celsius. From the base of the epipelagic, the temperature drops over several hundred meters to 5 or 6 degrees Celsius at 1,000 meters. It continues to decrease to the bottom, but the rate is much slower. Below 3,000 to 4,000 meters, the water is isothermal between 0 and 3 degrees Celsius. The cold water stems from sinking heavy surface water in the polar regions. At any given depth, the temperature is practically unvarying over long periods of time. There are no seasonal temperature changes, nor are there any annual changes. No other habitat on Earth has such a constant temperature. Hydrothermal vents are the direct contrast with constant temperature. In these systems, the temperature of the water as it emerges from the Black smoker chimneys may be as high as 400 degrees Celsius. It is kept from boiling by the high hydrostatic pressure, while within a few meters it may be back down to 2 to 4 degrees Celsius. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Biology. Regions below the epipelagic are divided into further zones, beginning with the mesopelagic which spans from 200 to 1000 meters below sea level, where so little light penetrates that primary production becomes impossible. Below this zone the deep sea begins, consisting of the aphotic bathopelagic, abyssopelagic and hadopelagic. Food consists of falling organic matter known as marine snow and carcasses derived from the productive zone above, and is scarce both in terms of spatial and temporal distribution. Instead of relying on gas for their buoyancy, many deep sea species have jelly like flesh consisting mostly of glycosaminoglycans, which provides them with very low density. It is also common among deep water squid to combine the gelatinous tissue with a flotation chamber filled with a colomic fluid made up of the metabolic waste product ammonium chloride, which is lighter than the surrounding water. The midwater fish have special adaptations to cope with these conditions. They are small, usually being under 25 cm 10 in, they have slow metabolisms and unspecialized diets, preferring to sit and wait for food rather than waste energy searching for it. They have elongated bodies with weak, watery muscles and skeletal structures. They often have extendable, hinged jaws with recurved teeth. Because of the sparse distribution and lack of light, finding a partner with which to breed is difficult, and many organisms are hermaphroditic. Because light is so scarce, fish often have larger than normal, tubular eyes with only rod cells. Their upward field of vision allows them to seek out the silhouette of possible prey. Prey fish however also have adaptations to cope with predation. These adaptations are mainly concerned with reduction of silhouettes, a form of camouflage. 
The two main methods by which this is achieved are reduction in the area of their shadow by lateral compression of the body, and counter-illumination via bioluminescence. This is achieved by production of light from ventral photophores, which tend to produce such light intensity to render the underside of the fish of similar appearance to the background light. For more sensitive vision in low light, some fish have a retroreflector behind the retina. Flashlight fish have this plus photophores, which combination they use to detect eyeshine in other fish see tapetum lucidum, organisms in the deep sea are almost entirely reliant upon sinking living and dead organic matter which falls at approximately 100 meters per day. In addition, only about 1-3% of the production from the surface reaches the sea bed mostly in the form of marine snow. Larger food falls, such as whale carcasses, also occur and studies have shown that these may happen more often than currently believed. There are many scavengers that feed primarily or entirely upon large food falls and the distance between whale carcasses is estimated to only be 8 kilometers. In addition, there are a number of filter feeders that feed upon organic particles using tentacles, such as Freyella elegans. Marine bacteriophages play an important role in cycling nutrients in deep sea sediments. They are extremely abundant between 5 by 1012 and 1 by 1013 phages per square meter in sediments around the world. Topic. Chemosynthesis There are a number of species that do not primarily rely upon dissolved organic matter for their food and these are found at hydrothermal vents. One example is the symbiotic relationship between the tube worm Riftia and chemosynthetic bacteria. It is this chemosynthesis that supports the complex communities that can be found around hydrothermal vents. These complex communities are one of the few ecosystems on the planet that do not rely upon sunlight for their supply of energy. Topic. Exploration The deep sea is one of the less explored areas on Earth. Pressures even in the mesopelagic become too great for traditional exploration methods, demanding alternative approaches for deep-sea research. Baited camera stations, small man submersibles and ROVs remotely operated vehicles are three methods utilized to explore the ocean's depths. Because of the difficulty and cost of exploring this zone, current knowledge is limited. Pressure increases at approximately 1 atmosphere for every 10 meters meaning that some areas of the deep sea can reach pressures of above 1,000 atmospheres. This not only makes great depths very difficult to reach without mechanical aids, but also provides a significant difficulty when attempting to study any organisms that may live in these areas as their cell chemistry will be adapted to such vast pressures. Topic. See also Deep sea fish Deep ocean water Submarine landslide The blue planet Topic. Notes Topic. External links Deep Sea Foraminifera, Deep Sea Foraminifera from 4,400 meters depth, Antarctica, an image gallery and description of hundreds of specimens. Deep Ocean Exploration on the Smithsonian Ocean Portal. Deep Sea Creatures Facts and Images from the Deepest Parts of the Ocean. How Deep is the Ocean Facts and Infographic on Ocean Depth. Pressure at Depth Calculator.